you can find me, me, at Aaron Hill TV, V, at Aaron Hill TV, V, at Aaron Hill TV, V, at Aaron Hill TV, dot TV, on IG. Hey, what's up, family? So this is a review video, or response video, rather, to the Bose S1 Pro versus the JBL Eon One Compact. These are two portable, portable battery powered um, PA speakers and I'm looking to grab one of them for uh, some outside things that I'm trying to do where I won't have power. They both kind of come in at about the 500 to $600 mark. Um, although I did see a couple use JBL Eon ones for about $399. But this is going to be a reaction video. And if you're watching right now live on Facebook, if you watch this video afterwards on my YouTube channel, Aaron Hill TV, then you're going to see the video that I'm watching along with my reaction. So here we go. <laughs> Hey everyone, Andy back again with a comparison video in Compact PA Systems. Uh, with our overwhelming reception that we got from our unboxing video of the newly released JBL EN1 Compact, we got a lot of requests for a bit of a comparison with the tried and true Bose S1 Pro. So we're going to take a look at both of them, go through the feature set, have a bit of a listen at the end, and see what's new and see what the two have in common. So first of all, let's have a look at the form factor. Both very compact. The JBL is a little, little larger, maybe about 15-20% bigger than the S1 here. Um, but you know, very, you know, you can move them around a lot, really nice and sort of compact and easy to sort of get around. We're going to have a look at the S1 first. Everyone's put it more familiar with this product. So let's take a look. Really nice uh, front panel. Um, with the logo actually being able to be rotated around. That is interesting, and the logo. There's a nice nifty reason for that, we'll logo show you later. Logo flips around. Round to the side, we've got our controls. So it's a really nice and straightforward layout. We've got two inputs up the top, which are combo uh, quarter inch and XLR connections. And we've got an aux connection, so a three channel mixer all up, and a Bluetooth button as well. Then a little further below, we've got the line out, so you can connect a couple together. USB port for servicing and updating. Uh, IEC or jug connection, so you can either use it via mains or to charge the battery. Very, very handy. And our on-off switch. When at the bottom position, you are got it charging. In the middle is off and up the top is on. Very, very handy, very straightforward. So for the first two inputs, we've got three controls here, three rotary controls, one for reverb, the second for bass, and the last for treble. Then below that, we've got a three position switch between off, an instrument, ideally for a guitar, and then for a microphone, which uh, all have the tone match feature. So they're sort of EQ'd um, accordingly, depending on what you have that on. So that's for the first two channels. And then for the aux, uh, no reverb or EQ on that, so you can either just plug in via 3.5 millimeter connection, uh, hardwired, or you can pair via Bluetooth. So you can have those running all simultaneously. Really cool. Uh, around at the side, we've got our volume control for each of our three channels. Nice and easy, very straightforward. And when we have this powered on, we'll, uh, if we've got incoming signal, we've got the LED there to let us know what's going on. Around the bottom. So one thing I want to say here is there's no um, there's no master volume control, um, you know. But that doesn't bother me as much. I mean, for the most part, I'm just looking to plug in, you know, one keyboard, and um, I'm gonna definitely run my phone to it um, via Bluetooth, and I could plug in a speaker, I mean, a uh, microphone as well, but. Doesn't bother me too much, but it that would be one kind that there's no overall master volume for the whole mix. So you could just turn the whole mix up and down. We've got a pole mount, so you can actually put this uh, onto a speaker pole if you need to mount it like that. We've got our battery life info for those of you that need to know. Yes. And to access the battery itself, uh, just need a Phillips head screwdriver to, to pop the lid off that. 
and Bob's your uncle. Around the side, we've got a mounting position here. So we've got some nice sort of rubber pads. So, you know, for your auctioneer or, you know, sort of corporate event, you're probably going to have it up like this. But if you're perhaps a busking or performing musician or having it, you know, around the campfire or something like that, uh, having it mounted on the side, it's great. And oh, wow. there's different EQ adjustments of both of those. So really nifty. So one thing that they talked about with this was the tone match feature. Um, and they said that that is a really good feature that EQs based on what's coming through it. That's pretty nice, especially for people who don't have EQing uh, capabilities. And even those of us that do, it just makes it really easy to just kind of plug and play. And up the top, we've got a very convenient handle. It's real so, compact too. That's sort of a wrap for the S1. It's really nice and compact, really easy to use, full feature set, three channel mixer, uh, and nice uh, grill at the front. And also, when we're mounting it like this, we've got our bow sign at the front. I think they say very 15 nice. pounds on this one. Which is Let's really take a look at the Eon One Compact. So as I described before, we've got a slightly larger form factor, but still very nice and light. Not a particularly strong dude, but this is uh, you know, quite manageable. Round the back, we've got our connections. So from the top, our power button, always very handy. Combo XLR and quarter inch connections for our first two channels. Our third channel is a dedicated line in for instruments. So that's actually for hi Z, dedicated for, um, for instruments such as guitars, basses. And then we've got a 3.5 aux in, which is also Bluetooth compatible. Down below that, we've got a pass through for connecting to another speaker hmm. and our headphone output as this well. One has a headphone. And then we've got two USB ports. So you can actually charge your mobile devices. You can charge your phone um, speaker. And a very nifty feature nice. with this is they're actually able to uh, power nine volts uh, to a wireless system, for example. So you could have a handheld system or a uh, battery pack if you're wanting to you know, be running up and down the beach playing guitar now that's uh, with a wireless good. system. So that's really cool. You can run that completely uh, you know, power free, running off the battery itself. Now that's pretty cool. That's, a, that's an advantage of the JBL to be able to power wireless devices right off of the battery itself. Is, that's, a, that's a good advantage. Very cool. IEC down the bottom for charging or running off mains. And then right at the very back, we've got our battery compartment. So this is a, a toolless um, operation. So we've got a, just a very simple screw here, which we can unravel and then pop the back off. And here's our battery. So you could, if you wanted to, you know, take this away for a, for a big weekend and get the maximum sort of batteries. output, then you could stock up on a couple of these extra batteries and replace them as needed. That's very nice cool. and easy. So we'll pop that back on there. Probably and won't need more than one battery though. Go. 11 hours. So moving around to the side, this is where our sort of mixer control uh, sits here. So I'm just going to power this guy on here because we've got some pretty flash LEDs going on. Nice Lights LEDs. up like a Christmas tree. So we've got our master volume control. And each of these uh, controls here have an endless rotary encoder. So that's giving you an indication of your level, which is really, really great, especially in low lit environments. And then we've got our yeah, that's pretty cool. gain uh, control here. Second one down is our treble control. Very nice and easy. Our bass down the bottom and our reverb below it there. And so also we've got our individual channels. So we can either select oh. each of them. So as you select each channel, you'll notice how the different colors change. That's so that's neat. giving you an indication as to how you've got your level set. And all of the four channels do feature uh, EQ and reverb, including the Bluetooth channel, which is pretty nifty. When we have them all selected, these all become our individual gain controls for our um, individual channels. So that just is a really clear indicator. Mm. So if you need to quickly go and adjust your gain on the fly without having to go through endless selections, that's a really great feature. And then you got a master volume. Second button down, we've got our mic and line selection. So for our first two channels, if you've got a line source input, such as a keyboard or other such instrument, you can plug that in. 
or if you've got a microphone, you select it as such. Below that, we've got phantom power for the first two channels again. So if you're using a condenser microphone for more sensitivity or lapels for you know, presentations, that sort of thing, or a headset for um, gym instructors, for example, uh, that's a great feature there. Or you can run an active DI on that as well. And then the button below that is our ducking feature, which I'll explain a little bit more in a second. Mm, that's pretty um, nice. It's a really, really powerful feature. feature. Um, for a lot of applications. So if, for example, if you're a gym instructor with, you know, using this, pumping lots of, uh, lots of music out to your, to your class, but then you need to be uh, doing instructions over the top of that, then as soon as that mic level is uh, detected on the unit, then the, the music automatically ducks down. Really, really cool feature. Down that the bottom, lastly, is that nice. Bluetooth button, which is very simple, I think we've all paired to a Bluetooth speaker once in our lives at least. So that's it for the side panel. Really, really nice and easy, lots going on. And there's also a uh, further control with this as well uh, via the Eon Compact Connect app, oh. which unfolds a lot more power with uh, more effects, wow. more EQ, um, and you're actually able to connect up to four of these units via Bluetooth simultaneously. I didn't know it Very, very cool. An app. And you can be streaming music simultaneously uh, whilst using that. Hmm. So they've really packed a lot. That's pretty into, cool. Um, the fact that you can stream music from a Bluetooth device and at the same time use the app to be able to change features. And that was pretty cool to, to be able to control that remotely like that. This JBI hive, which is great. Down the bottom, I've got our pole mounting, nice and centered. So it's very secure if you're mounting it on a speaker pole. And what have we got up the top here? So this looks, this is actually for uh, an iPad, an iPad uh, or mobile sort of holder. So if you're mm. wanting to be able to just slot that in to be able to make quick selections, it's that great. Right. Nice handy um, handle there. A handy handle, very, very good. <laughs> and round the side, much like the S1 Pro as well, we've got these uh, rubber feet so you can mount it on the side. And the ultimate test, does it do the logo switch? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Is that the logo Beautiful. Switch too? Cool. Oh, so the EQ now that we've run this one changes as well when it's on this Through side. the features of both these speakers, we're going to take a listen to both. It's the test. Got to hear these. When I heard before, the Bose outdid the JBL for me, but let's see. I'm going to listen to this at a low volume right now. It'll be louder in listening through uh, Yamaha. Man. That bow just has so much more definition. Especially in the low end. Now that we've had a listen to these both, don't forget all the applications <laughs> that, that both of these speakers are appropriate for. Buskers and street musicians, either a soloist, a duo, or even a trio. You could, you've got enough connectivity with both public speakers such as celebrants, uh, gym instructors, auctioneers, uh, corporate presentations, also appropriate for DJs and general at home use or you can take them out camping or take them to the beach. In summary, the Bose S1, it's been on the market for a while, solid reputation, immediate features, three channel mixer, nice compact PA system. The JBL EM1 Compact, newer to the market, few more features, some more connectivity, larger mixer, slightly larger form factor. It's hard to split the two, but for me, the JBL with its extra features, connectivity, app, and more SPL edges ahead of the two. Thanks for watching, and for more information, check the links below. See you next time. So that was a pretty, uh, he did a really good job. I like the way that he, um, I like the way that he went through that. He went through he went through it really well. He didn't, you know, take a long time. I mean, it is a 12-minute interview, but by all means, it is that was very succinct the way that he did that. You know, it's funny because after like 
watching this. I mean, I looked at a few videos before now and just kind of, you know, got an idea. After watching this, I like the JBL more for the f features, you know, but that Bose sound. I'm going to listen to a couple more side-by-sides. That Bose sound was just... Yeah, it had... it had. Uh, in fact, this first person says, I played John Mayer's Gravity through both of them myself. The hi-hat was non-existent on the JBL. It sounded like a crossover issue. 304K was noticeably way down. The Bose sounds excellent and has a little bit better low end. That's what I heard immediately. The JBL has a real plastic cabinet sound in the bass, in my opinion. That, the, as soon as they started playing it, that's immediately what I noticed. Um, David Eld, um, Eldberg, Eld, Elderberg says, Can music playback is zero indication of how these sounds with vocal and acoustic guitars? To me, the S1 sounds much better without EQ. The JBL requires a lot of EQ to make it sound good with guitar and vocals. But it never sounds quite good as the S1. I find it a bit difficult to manipulate the EQ on the phone app. The volume differences are minor at clipping. The JBL is a good bit larger, but still small. I'm gigging it tonight, so I have a real test. Yeah. Um, okay, this person says, it's a pity that the information in this video wasn't researched correctly. I own the SP1 Pro along with other Bose products, and you miss a lot of its capabilities. This video isn't a fair rep representation of either speaker. It's just pointless. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. This person summed it up. He says, sound Bose, features JBL, looks Bose. That's, that's, that's good. The Bose sounds amazing. That's how I felt. Funny how the comparison here shows the Bose with more bass and pretty Chris highs and mids compared to the JBL. But everyone has a favorite. I enjoy my S1 Pros for ceremony setup. I'm going to check out his, his video. Hmm. So, I definitely feel like that Bose is going to be the one for me. I really do in the end. Um, I'm looking down a few more. A few more comments. The sounds, the Bose, Andy says, as Andy Salvano says, the Bose sounds better to me in every comparison I've heard before. But in this one, it sounds too scooped for my liking. As someone who busks with a low range instrument, I think the Eon might work better. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to a couple more videos on my own where they're just playing the Eon one just by itself and the Bose S1 by itself. Because I still, I've heard a few other, um, a few other videos where the Eon one, in fact, there was one video this guy was doing it where I couldn't even tell the difference. I wasn't, I wasn't quite paying attention really closely though um so you know that that made it kind of hard but you know hard to judge but i still think the bose sounds a bit better in the end so yeah i'm gonna have a listen and see what happens <laughs> Yeah. This is the Eon One by JBL. Now this is a loudspeaker, an amp, a mixer, and effects all dope. rolled the into JBL one, one easy to carry great. package. Let's take a closer look. I really Aims just want to take a industry. closer sound. And that means that they can... <laughs> a closer listen. Let me see if he plays anything through here. Let's see. Both of these are good speakers, though. I realize you, you kind of can't go wrong with either one of these. Um, but on top, you can also optimize your sound with an eight band output expert in this field. But the guy that I got to play the guitar, I asked him if there were features that were missing. Yeah. All right, so I know I'm skimming, to mute. <laughs> skimming through now. The channel, you have to literally select it through the selecting until it goes. 
but I do think I do think that I'm going to now this video here I looked at this video with Flossie Carter and um man that I have to say you know after listening to his video I was definitely let me see what this Bose S1 Pro perfect for backyard not just for ceremonies let me see if he if he plays uh hey guys so in this video we are going to be comparing the Bose L1 compact speaker Oh, I see. And actually, this was the one I was And on the right-hand side is the Bose S1 Pro speaker. Now, obviously, both of these speakers are made by Bose. And the L1 oh, here has L1 actually been in the market for over 10 years now. And it's actually the bigger brother. Now, over here is the smaller guy. Let me just listen to... That's a pretty good sound. Solid all the way around. Like, and I'm listening to it through my speakers and then his speaker is distant, distance away. But, um, yeah. More professional level. Okay, I was, I was hoping that this, this guy. Better than I'm not professing you. Let me know your thoughts. Play unit itself. There's two sounds, but it looks like he doesn't really do too much playing of sound. So this has an 8-inch woofer with deep low frequency performance right down to 37.5 Hz. We've already talked about the weight, but also the setup is super quick. I'm going to show you a little bit about the application that you can have with this in just a second. Probably should have well. did that at first. Probably should have did the sound test. All right. Eon 1 sound test. Okay, let me hear this guy this guy is. Yeah, I still think, unless for some reason I find a really, really cheap uh, JBL Eon 1 that I just can't refuse. But for this review, we're looking for a speaker that runs only on either batteries or is completely self-sufficient as far as its sound power. Um, yeah, so I think, sorry, I was looking for something that was real simple. Okay, here's one. Looking for a quick video where someone can just get to the point. <laughs> and then we're out of here. Okay, okay, so he's playing acoustic guitar through it. And the good thing is he started off playing it. So we get a chance to hear that right away. say so myself yeah that's, that sounds really good hey folks welcome to another product spotlight by making music magazine i'm chuck sheely and here we are with the jbl more and then i think i'm going to make a final choice i still think the bows is going to be my choice because i just think all around, I think that that sound quality, I'm looking to play piano through it, and I think that it has a nice balanced sound for that. So I'm gonna say right now that one wins out, unless I find a really cheap Eon one where I'm saving several hundred dollars and I'm just like, all right, well, can't refuse it. So that's about it. If you get a chance to check out these speakers or you're in the 
the market looking for one? Let me know what you decide. That's about it. Okay, so I had to come back on here because I think I found the video to end the discussion of <laughs> which one is better. So I listened to uh, a few videos <clears throat> and, um, you know, I always think that the, that the uh, S1 Pro sounded better. I mean, there was one video where it was kind of a little deceiving because it sounded a bit closer, but for the most part, that low end of the S1 Pro. Anyway, so I'm going through a few more videos. I finally come across this one. Here we go. This one ended. So I'm going to play the first couple examples that they play uh, the music through music uh, through the speakers. And this is a rap right here. And watch this on YouTube afterwards for the graphics. So this is the S1 Pro. I can hear that low end. That low end is pretty big and crisp. And the, the highs are pretty crisp. Now that's the Eon one. I mean, it's just like the life was just sucked out of it. The life was literally sucked out of the middle of the music with the Eon one. And then here's the QSC CP8. Which to me, that sounds better than the JBL as well. So he's gonna switch back to the bows. Yeah, so that JBL has like a, it's like this mid-range bump and at the same time, the mid-range isn't there. And then here's the bows. That bows, it just has a much more solid and sturdy low end. And the highs are crisp and the mids sound pretty natural. I'm gonna play like maybe one, let them play through maybe one more song, one or two. Listen to that. I mean, it went, it literally went flat. Like it went flat, flat. Yeah, and you, the QSC sounds better naturally. Now you can EQ the JBL, that's the one thing. Here, it's probably a flat, EQ but I feel like even still even with it being able to be EQ'd like I could just tell it's lacking in that in that mid and this is pretty flat in that mid and low range so I'm gonna let him play one more okay this was the one right here I mean listen to the the crispness of the finger snaps all of that low hit gone I mean I could hear that even if I was deaf like that yeah the JBL I mean it's not even that it sounds bad but it's next to that Bose the Bose just has the much much better sound quality and I'm willing to bet that all of these are flat I'm gonna have to look at his description to see if he talked about it um yeah he didn't he didn't quite say but this is the one you know the shootout is over <laughs> the bows won for me and I was gonna look at the JBL to save a few dollars because you could save a couple hundred dollars on it um, because I found a used one for like four and the Bose is definitely between five and six, but you know, the other thing is that the JBL is louder too. It has a higher SPL, but louder is not really the best thing here. Um, especially for me, cause my goal is to keep it kind of where the people can just kind of hear me if they're pretty close.
so that's it. That's my final. <laughs> the Bose One. The Bose S1 Pro for me is the way to go. And um, yeah, that's a wrap. I still think the JBL Eon is a good buy um, because that connectivity and the the extra, you know, the mixer on the app and that kind of thing. Like, pfft. yep. So that's about it. Let me know what you think if you get a chance to check it out. And if you're watching this live, check out this video on YouTube right after this and you'll see what I was looking at there and you'll see it with a much better look. So, peace. Yeah. So to help me to make more content like this, please see the info in the description or comments. Thanks so much for watching. And if we're not already connected on all my other homes, the Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, etc. But you can find me, me, at Aaron Hill TV, V, at Aaron Hill TV, V, at Aaron Hill TV, V, at Aaron Hill TV, dot TV, on IG.